Alison, a disappointing end here today in Ireland's Six Nations campaign in association with Guinness. They'd finished France 56, Ireland 15. Not a great day out for them. No, disappointing for the Irish girls. Obviously, they had huge confidence coming into the game. They talked about potential shock being on the cards and obviously, um, you know, a comprehensive victory for the French team there who were, you know, really dominant in all areas of the pitch, really. But um, Ireland got off to quite a good start and had a spirited um, start to the game. They got a penalty, they defended well, and um, I think when France got into their groove, then it was really no stopping them. Let's take a look at Ireland first here. It was a bit scrappy from them, not getting on much ball. Yeah, I suppose, you know, the challenge pose last week was Wales and then you come up against such a physically imposing team like France. Like, they're so much more physical than a lot of teams in the Six Nations. They're huge um, tacklers, they're very defensively, very, very well organised. So, you know, when Ireland were carrying, they weren't getting the same game line as they would have got last weekend against Wales. And both physically then, when you know, um, both an attack and defence Ireland were probably dominated physically by that huge French pack and by their back line. You did mention the difference in physicality here today between both sides. Yeah, like I suppose if you just even look at the two teams, um, if you look at them, the size is a huge difference. The pack, the French pack, you know, are very big, very big in stature, very strong. Even the French um, backs, you know, they're they're quite strong and they're physical looking. So there is a huge um, difference in the physicality, which, which kind of showed then as the game went on. Some massive hits some of those players took today. Yeah, certainly there were some big hits in there. Um, <laughs> sore bodies tomorrow. There will be sore bodies tomorrow, yeah. But I think that, you know, playing the French French over the years, they were always really, really good tacklers. They're always physical. There's one thing that they can do is tackle and tackle well. With Ireland, you know, was there signs of some positive signs today for you, Alison? Yeah, I think they, they played some really um, nice phases and they looked like they were, um, you know, retaining the ball well. They're... Um, their driving mall was really good, their rolling mall, they got two tries off it. So I think that was a positive, you know, when they did get down um, to those areas, they got two tries from it. Memma Hooban and Cleena Maloney, both hookers actually. And it was good that they actually got a try when there were 14 men down. Now they did have, they lost two players within the game, so they were playing, you know, that spell with two players down at different times. But yeah, I thought um, Emer Constantine had a very good game at full back defensively. Um, there was a lot of times she was, um, had to make last man tackles and you know it was just one on one and she made them and she so she stopped certain tries. Um, I also thought Stacey Flood came on made an impact. Um, and yes, there was some positives from that. I thought, yeah, definitely. You mentioned Emer just a few moments ago, and I think that you know she really did stop them conceding some more tries, and she was really important. Yeah, I think Emer to me is one of the most improved players since her debut in 2017. She just gets better and better and gets more physical. So um, the def her her defence has become a really strong part of her game. You know, she's become physical. She tracks the play well, and she's able to make those tackles. And we saw her stopping. I'd say maybe two or three certain tries really and I know they might have they scored the next phase or whatever it was but she you did really well uh, defensively and the French I mean looking at them they played some amazing rugby today oh they are a class act and you know from 1 to 23 there really is no weakness um, when you look at who the players they had on the bench they had Pauline Bordeaux on the bench who is absolutely a class act when she came on just her innovativeness in and around the ruck to release players, such a you know a variety to her game. Your Vrom Romain Menage who came on and scored a try and just have so much depth that they're you know, they could probably field um, a different combination. And it's very I like for for the coach there, for the French coach, I'm sure she's probably used the last two games to figure out who her best fifteen are, but strong competition there from, from all those French twenty three. What about Boulard and Bougeard together? They're dangerous. Yeah, to me they're just like really, really good wingers um, because, you know, the, the elusiveness of it. I think um, Bougeard um, is quite an elusive winger. She's quite fast. She's got good uh, kicking skills as well to bring to her game. She's elusive. Um, she's, very, she's very, very fast. I think she's got quite a long range stride that we probably don't, she doesn't look like she's going as actually fast as she is. And um, Bane is something else. Like I think she's probably the most unrated wing. That's probably not talked about. Like maybe some other wingers in the championship. That you know she she is so hard to deal with. She scored some unbelievable tries against England in the Autumn Internationals, and she's very elusive. She's very physically a sore in defence. So um, you know, unfortunately for Ireland, um, you know the French dealt with Bavin Parsons well when she got the ball. Like they dealt with her very well. I suppose she probably hasn't come up maybe against 
you know, a defensive, a strong defensive winger. Obviously, we would have liked to got a lot more ball to her in a lot more space, which obviously then she can do more with it. And the same with Amy Lee Murphy Crow. She's a speedster, but we didn't. We might have got her the ball once or twice in not so much space. So the two of, the, two of our main potent attacking threats which were dealt really well with today by the French, and I'm sure they were, um, you know, what is the word looking for? They were putting, you know, they kept an eye on them and they were trying to target them not to get the balls to them because they would be, as I said, Ireland's biggest threats. And unfortunately, we didn't get the ball enough to them. You know, last week, I think Wales, Ireland really showed up against them. And then this week, they were facing a different beast in France. And it probably poses the question of the professionalism that the France team would have compared to Ireland. And was that the difference here today? Yeah, I suppose it, it's, it's kind of, it, it's the Six Nations now, it shows there's, different tiers to it um you know ireland obviously but um bet wales 45 nil last week and then today the 41 point difference then shows the difference between france then and ireland so you know you've got these different um tiers of i won't say ability because it's it's not ability those irish girls are all full of ability but they're just they're working at a different you know they're different different capacity than um this french team you know they're all working full-time jobs they're they're managing their careers and they're they're giving up a lot and they're early mornings, the late lights and a lot of driving. So, um, yeah, it, it probably is the difference. Um, I think John and Air asked me, you know, what's the difference between the two teams, really? And I said, look, we probably won't know till the full time score. But, um, you know, Ireland will be disappointed. But there were some good aspects to their play. And I think, you know, if they've improved definitely since um, 2018, 2019, they were probably you know, really, really disappointing years for Irish women's rugby. So look, it's not all doom and gloom. They've 2020 was a great year and they won their three home games. This year, obviously, they're not getting to play as many games because of the format of the championship. But there definitely is signs of improvement, but um, probably yeah, a big gap between the Frances and the England of the Six Nations. A lot now for Ireland, you know, they were so confident last weekend of the week before. Everyone was, it's so un-Irish, to, or, or un-Irish of us to be that confident. Do you think it'll take a bit of a knock after today? Yeah, I'd imagine so. If you're if you're confident and, and you're you're talking about creating a, you know a shock and you, you you do believe it, it's not that you're saying it you're saying it cheaply. It's just something you firmly believe because you've put the work in. So yeah, I'd imagine they'd be disappointed. But um, now for Ireland, they have to look on to the next game, um, and that is a big a big thing from because the, they have another game now. And more importantly, not that the Six Nations isn't important. It is, it is so important. But Ireland have these World Cup qualifiers that they need to nail down. And qualify for that World Cup. So, what they'll be looking for now is their next game that they play. Um, is to get a good performance, gain more confidence that when they do play those qualifiers, whenever they are going to be scheduled to be put off a few times, that Ireland can go into those qualifiers and perform and qualify for the World Cup. So they've loads to look forward to. There is loads of improvement. I was impressed with some of the subs that came on today. Really made an impact. Um, as I said, Stacey Flood, I thought she did really well, really good distribution and um, she got some lovely turnovers actually for um, for a 10, you know, nearly like a back rower. What have you made of the sevens coming in? You know, they, they seem to have had a positive impact. Everyone's talking about the amount of camps they've had all together. They're gelling well as a team. I mean, all positive. There is positive signs there. Yeah, and I suppose, like, I was a former sevens player myself and played 15s and I think the issue isn't their ability, you know, it never is. I think it's just, uh, pop, you know, previously maybe they were coming in for a game or two and they might have been only in a few camps and I think that's probably problematic for team cohesion for um, performance of different players getting used to each other like if someone's come, only coming in at the end or at the start of Six Nations for maybe a game or two you're not used to them you don't know how they play their style of play and you're not on the same page but where they've been fully immersed this year and it just shows that makes a difference it makes a difference to the whole squad but it makes a difference to those sevens players that they can actually get the best out of themselves that they are used to the systems that they're used to certain moves that they're on the on the same page as the girls and we can see then that when that's done and when it's done in the right way it can be really positive and they can add a huge benefit to the team so um yeah there's like that's great to see those girls getting their first cap um and someone like eve higgins like i would have loved to have capped her i said to her <laughs> sent her a good luck text a few weeks ago i was like i would have i would have captured myself four years ago you know she was she's out there so it's great to see the likes of her and stacy and emily lane you know getting their first caps and 
performing well and, and they'll be they'll they'll add to the team going forward especially for these qualifiers what can ireland learn from a team like playing france there's a lot that they can take from this now yeah i suppose even in that first half there um French women are very like their French men. They don't actually need a lot of possession. So on, you know, turnover ball, they will kill you. They, they'll just, if you give them cheap possession or you knock on or you, you turn the ball over, you know, you, you know, fumble a ball. We saw Bevan Parsons had a really good run. It was probably one of the few good runs that she, she kind of leg drive and broke a tackle. But unfortunately, she kind of spilled the ball in contact and then France just picked it up and they scored a try straight off. It's so, they're so dangerous. Um, so when you're playing a team like that, you have to cut the errors, you have to try and control the game. Um, it's easier said than done when, they ha when they're when they so dominant, but um, you know, your, your scrum, like our scrum came under a lot of pressure today. It was very good at times, but, um, and I know a winger talking about scrums is never great, but, uh, <laughs> but they put our scrum under huge pressure. So it's trying to, you know, improve our scrum because you saw last week we had a great platform for our backs to attack and Bevan Parsons didn't get a try off first phase but today you know we're, we're coming under a lot more pressure so it's just continuing on the journey they are working hard you know up in their s &C, up in their physicality and hopefully you know with Covid they can actually get more games you know hopefully they can get on internationals some more tours get playing more all those kind of things that help and as much as the 20 camps have really benefited this team it's also um, you can see obviously they're, they, there's parts of their game that you know need work and you probably only learn these things about yourself the more you're playing so yeah they've, they've had internal games against each other but um, it's really games like this that you go okay A, B and C we need to work on those different things and, and really improve but um, you know there was positive performances as I said Leash woman Emma Hoobin got a try I coached her when she was 12 so it's good to see her getting on the score but I'm not sure if it's her first try for Ireland but I think um set piece is, is definitely important when you're playing a team um, like this and and your defence we saw great you know line speed last week you know Wales did not have an inch but when you're playing such a dominant team with huge physicality they're just getting over the game line coming in waves and waves and that that is hard to defend so you know keep improving our um, defensive structures and the type of ways that we defend will be important yeah Brilliant. Thanks for joining us today. It was great to see the girls in action finally. Yeah, it was great. And look, and I'm sure um, we'd, we'd, we'd love to see them playing more games. And hopefully, um, when this COVID goes away, hopefully, um, we'll see this team in action more. Thanks, Alison. No problem.